In this video, I want to show you how you can use the if DAX function in Power BI. We're going to go through how to construct a basic if statement and also how you can do nested ifs. So creating if statements inside if statements. And after that, I also want to cover a different DAX function, the switch, in order to handle multiple if statements much better. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernanda and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's go through this demo that I prepared for you today. It's a simple sample sales data set that has some information about sales. I got this off the internet and it has enough information for us to work with. So if we go to the data set itself on the tables, you'll see that in our sales table, we have some information about the kind of products that we sell, so types of cars, some trucks, uh, information about how much we sold, what the unit price is, and what was the sale amount. Also some information about the customers, so the customer name, which country they belong to, which territory, what the size of the deal is and also when the order was made. Beyond this sales table, we also included a couple of the standard tables that we usually include with our data model. So we have the calendar table, which we use for our time series. It's just using the calendar auto function. And also we have a calculation measure table, which handles all of the measures. So we, we, we just group them all there so we know where they are. At the moment, what we have is a measure called total sales, which essentially just does the calculation of the quantity against the unit price. So typically you'd use an if statement as part of your calculated column. So in, for example, let's say we want to be able to create a sum for all of our sales and only for those sales for classic cars, right? So how would we want to do that? Is we go to here under sales, we'd create a new column here. And then we would do, let's name it classic car sales. So from here, if I type an if statement, you will see if I hit tab, it will ask you for three things. And essentially there are three parts to an if statement. So you have the logical expression of what you want to evaluate. So in this case, we want to check if the product line is a classic car or not. The true and the false. So what you want to happen if it's true and what you want to happen if it's false. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to type if the product line is a um, classic car if it's true what we want to do is we want to show the sales right so if it's not classic car we want to leave it as blank so in this case the the false can be empty it's optional uh, so we'll just leave it blank for now if I hit enter now and now you'll see what it's done. It's created a calculated column for us in our sales table. If I add that into our table here, so you will see that it only shows us the sales for those classic cars and it leaves any of the rows that isn't classic cars as empty. And what that allows us to do is if we put that now in a card that will give us the total sales for just the classic cars. Now this method works okay because you're essentially creating a if condition for every single row of your data. Now if you want to use the if statement into a measure, bear in mind that it doesn't work exactly the same. And let me show you why and how to fix it. So if you want to use the if statement on a measure, so let's say uh, we want to do the same thing, except we want to have it in a measure instead. We'll do, we'll just try to copy this if statement that we've created here in the calculated column. We'll go to calculations and let's create a new measure. So let's do classic car sales measure so that we're able to distinguish that. Now if we write an if statement here, and let's do, uh, actually, let's, let's not write it. We've already copied it. If I paste it here, you'll see that it gives me some issues. And that doesn't work because measures don't work like calculated columns. The calculated columns creates a 
new column in your table but measures doesn't work like that and it doesn't really understand what world context you want to evaluate it on so you need to do that explicitly by using an iterator now we covered iterators in the past so if you remember sum x count x these are the type of iterators available for you uh, when you use measures if you don't know what iterators are i suggest you check out my videos on it so from here what we'll use is we'll use the iterator sum x and from here what we'll do is we'll say for the sales table i want to sum the values of the sales if the product line is classic cars so we'll just write it here so actually we've already written here so that's the expression if we now close it now you'll see you don't have any more errors and if we do now the measure here as a car you'll see that you will have the exact same value as the calculated column that we've created so now that you know how to use an if statement in a measure in a calculated column let's go through another example so let's try to create another calculated column and this time we want to group the cars against the not cars so what we'll do we'll create another calculated column here and we will do cars and we'll do the same thing we'll do an if statement and actually what we'll do, um, we'll just paste what we've created here. And what you can do, you can also use different um, operators here. So you can use the double pipe in order to add some more values here. So let's say we want to um, show the sales if the product line is either classic cars or if it's vintage cars because they're both cars, right? So we'll do the double, um, double pipe and we'll do product line is equals to vintage cars. We'll hit enter and now if we add that into our table here and let's remove the classic car sales so now you will see that it shows you the sales for the cars that are vintage cars and classic cars so now i want to cover the topic of nested ifs nested ifs are essentially if statements within if statements where you want to control multiple results from your if statements so for example in this scenario here let's say we want to group our product lines even further let's say we want to group them by transport type so we want to group them by um, if they are transport, transporting by land or by air or by water. In order to do that, we'll need to create multiple if statements or nested if statements um, within our calculated column. So let me show you how you do that. So if we create a new column here, we'll create say transport type. So we'll do an if statement here and we say if the product line is vintage cars if it's vintage car then it's a land type if it's not um, it's something else so not land for now just to make it easier and let's add that custom column into our table here so now you have this calculated column that we created and let's expand on this by adding a few more uh, product lines in the land section. So we'll do the same trick that we did earlier and what I'll do just to make my life a little bit easier, we'll put the product lines here. So we have the list of product lines that we want to categorize. If we go back to our transport type, we want to say if it's vintage cars or Product line is equals to classic cars. So slowly we'll start categorizing all of the land type of um, product lines into land and then we'll move on to the next. So let me speed up this process so you don't have to watch me do all of these. So now that we have all of our um, land type transport uh, product lines, I'm gonna just try to clean up the look of this um, DAX code here just to um, make it a little bit readable, right? So I'm gonna use shift enter to just put them in different lines so we can read them much better. So 
So now that shows you the transport type for all of the land product lines that we have. And from here we can add now a nested if statement within the else statement. So remember, uh, we want to create another if statement within this if statement to say, um, if it's none of these product lines, we want to check if it's either a, a ship or plane to be able to categorize it even further. So what we'll do is we'll delete the not land here and we'll do another if statement. We'll do an open and close. And I've done just done another shift enter there. And I'll do a tab just to show where the if statement is. And then we'll do product line again. planes then it's air and then what we'll do is another if statement or well, you don't really need to do this but uh, this is um, most likely you will create multiple nested if statements in order to handle this kind of logic so let's do ships it ships then it's water. And that's it. So now you have a uh, calculated column transport type that categorizes your product lines depending on what they belong to, so land, water, or air. So now you've categorized your product lines by transport type using nested if statements. Now I want to show you how you can use the switch statements, which works pretty much the same way, except that it makes your code look a lot cleaner. Um, it's built essentially to handle these types of scenarios where you want to handle uh, multiple sets of the results uh, without having to create so many nested if statements. Let me show you how much easier it is to write this type of logic using the switch statement. So if we create another calculated column here, let's do transport type um, switch. So now if we write the switch statement here, you'll see that it asks for an expression. So in our case, we want to just put the product line here. And then what it does is it asks for values and results. So you don't have to write an if statement uh, after if statement after if statement. All you have to say is if the value of the product line is this, this should be the result. If, and you can repeat this as many times as you need within this switch statement without having to create those nested if statements. So let me go through this quickly um, and speed it up to make your life a lot easier. So I'll close this and I will just adjust this slightly to make it a lot easier to read. But as you can see, it's, it's a lot more cleaner in terms of how it's written as opposed to creating multiple if statements that can be confusing. So this is the switch statement that we've created, which does the exact same thing as the nested if statement that we did before, which as you can see is a lot easier to read as opposed to the nested if statement that we have here. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how to start using if statements, nested if statements, and the switch DAX function within Power BI. Leave a like on this video if it helped you. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching, guys. See you again on the next one.